Hey, what's up? Welcome to Exam AC900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 44, Management Groups. My name's Tim Warner. I'm happy to be your instructor. Today's skill in the Exam AZ900 objective domain is first in the functional group, describe Azure pricing, service level agreements, and life cycles. Through the objective, describe Azure subscriptions. And the skill is entitled, describe subscription management using management groups. Go to timw.info forward slash AZ900SG for an interactive table of contents of this study guide. Azure Management Scopes. Before we understand management groups, I want to review these scopes with you. Starting at the bottom, we've got our individual Azure resources, whether they're virtual networks, storage accounts, virtual machines, dev test labs, machine learning workspaces to tie in learning from previous lessons, automation accounts, it doesn't matter. The resources are always deployed without fail into the context or scope of a resource group. Resource group is a special container object. These resource groups are always attached to a subscription. The subscription is the payment method for you to use, whether it's credit or money, whatever the case is, how you're paying for your consumption of Azure. And then above subscriptions, we have management groups, which again is a container object, and it's meant to give Azure administrators the ability to perform governance on multiple subscriptions simultaneously. By the rules of inheritance, hopefully it makes sense that if we apply role-based access control or Azure policy to the resource group scope, those methods will flow by inheritance down to resources. Same with the subscription scope flows down through resource groups and resources. Management groups actually do the same thing all through subscriptions. So it's a very useful scope for businesses that do have multiple subscriptions and they want to simplify their governance in Azure. How do you do your management group topology? If you're a multinational organization, you may have geographical divisions among management groups, or it might be divisional, multiple business units, whatever it is, it's up to you and your governance team to figure out the right management group strategy for you. Above the management group is what's called the tenant root scope. And it's called tenant because it's associated directly with your Azure Active Directory tenant you don't really get access to that scope level. You'll recall either in the previous lesson or a couple lessons ago, I showed you how to elevate your access in Azure Active Directory, where by flipping that switch, Azure gives you access to the user access administrator role that exists at the tenant root scope. That means that that user access administrator role membership flows down through all management groups, subscriptions, resource groups, and ultimately resources. It's a very powerful scope indeed. You should know it exists. As far as Azure governance that does work by inheritance through these management scopes, there's role-based access control and there's Azure policy. Those are the main ones. Azure cost management also is tied very tightly to the management group level because you may want to roll up and aggregate your costing, your forecasting, your budgeting of multiple subscriptions as a unit. All right, in this demonstration, we're working with management groups. So why don't we cut right to the chase and use the Azure portals global search. I've been there recently, so the icon shows up in my recent services list. We'll go to management groups. Now, what we can see here is number one, any subscriptions that I have access to. And we can see that my role membership here is owner. So I'm not going to run into any problems with permissions. If you're messing around with the tenant root scope, which is what we're viewing right now, you have to think about your Azure Active Directory role membership. Ideally, you're coming in here as a global administrator. So you may have more than one subscription, in which case, of course, they're all by default associated at the tenant root scope by default. I created a test management group already just so you can see what it looks like in advance. Let's create a new management group, and then we're going to add both of my subscriptions to that group so we can do things like role-based access control and Azure policy that affects both of those subscriptions simultaneously. We'll go to Add Management Group, and I'll give it a short ID. Call it AZ900MG for AZ900 Management Group. There you have it. Let me click Save to commit that change. Once Azure creates the new group, we can browse into it, which we'll do right now by clicking it. And then this is a little bit non-intuitive. You would probably expect to see a settings panel, but you don't. Instead, we just see that we're at this management group scope, and there's currently no subscriptions associated with it. 
And if we go up to the toolbar, all we see is a button for add management group. It is possible to nest management groups, but I generally recommend against it. I like to keep a topology as just as complex as it needs to be and no more. That's another discussion for another time, more of an architecture question. Here's the money. In order to manage the management group, you actually have to click this little details link next to its name, and that'll open up a more traditional settings panel. Here we can head on up to the toolbar and click add subscription. Unfortunately, you can't do a multi-select, so I'm gonna grab my sponsorship subscription first and save that change. That brings us back a step, so we're gonna have to go back to the details again, Back to add subscription again, and now let me add my other subscription, Visual Studio Enterprise, and save that change. Okay, good. So now that we've equipped our management group, the last step would be to apply governance to it. So we can go to details, for example, and here we have our access control IAM and our Azure policies. We've already looked at these in previous lessons, so I'm actually not going to go any further with that. As far as cost management goes, we've got access to our cost analysis and budgets panels, which are useful, as I said, because we can, in fact, scope it, as you can see up here, to the management group level to be able to see your spending patterns in one view across multiple subscriptions. Unfortunately, my subscriptions, one of them is empty, it hasn't been used, and the other, my sponsorship subscription, isn't yet compatible with Azure cost management, so I'm not able to show you anything cool here, but it's better than nothing. Finally, I want to show you how to decommission a management group. If we come back to the overview page, you might realize we need to pare down the complexity of our infrastructure, and you may want to just remove selected subscriptions from a management group or decommission the whole thing. The common pattern in Azure when you're building is that you need to destroy and reverse. So in this case, we won't be able to delete the management group until we've reassigned these subscriptions. So let me grab each one, and I'm going to select Move and put it back under the tenant root group where it originally was. I'll save that change, then I'll open the ellipsis for my other subscription and do the same exact thing. Move, and then I'll choose the tenant root as its new parent. Click Save, and this should go pretty quickly. Now that the management group is empty, we're free to delete. Now, you're seeing me act pretty cavalierly, but before I close this demo, I just want to say how important it is that you keep in mind the power of working at this scope. Your business may have many subscriptions underneath the management group, and any governance that you apply at that level is going to cascade potentially through an enormous number of Azure subscriptions. For learning resources, number one, read about management groups in the Microsoft Docs, timw.info forward slash MGS1. I found, just by happenstance, a free white paper from Microsoft called Azure Strategy and Implementation Guide, and this is a link to the PDF directly, timw.info forward slash MGS2. That has some good guidance on Azure governance, which of course involves a discussion of management groups. Lastly, we have more information if you're interested on that Azure AD Elevated Access business that I've mentioned. You can read about that at timw.info forward slash MGS3. Well, there you have it. We've reached the end of another lesson. In our next episode, we're going to cover the subject of Azure Information Protection. It's a really cool service, and I'm looking forward to teaching it to you. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter, Tech Trainer Tim. Check out my plural site courses, timw.info forward slash ps, or visit my website, techtrainertim.com. Thanks again. Happy studying. I'll see you around.